All right, hello world history students. So, oops, did I just mess this up already? Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, I thought I would do a model of a one of our mind maps and then the um, project proposal. So I am going to do my own project along with you in order to better help you, hopefully, um, to better help you do your own project. So we're going to start with the mind map that we did. Um, so what period, this is the brainstorming section here. If you remember, we did this in a class prior. And if you're having issues with like running it feeling like you're running into a wall with your topic and you need to reevaluate and pick a new one you can always go back to this uh, mind map in google classroom which is also in your google drive if you can't find it <laughs> all right so what region or time period have i always wanted to know more about hmm well there's obviously a peak in interest about you know the history of russia and the soviet union and perhaps independence uh, movements within the breakup of the Soviet Union. So I happen to be particularly interested in Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. Um, I have a curiosity about learning about a Asian culture um, and also the Soviet Union. So what better topics to look at than these two countries is what I'm thinking will be a good focus for me in this project <clears throat> because honestly I don't know a lot about them and I would like to know more about them so that's a big importance in your project you need to not know the entire everything about the topic you're choosing so that you can learn about it through creating your project <clears throat> okay so I know I want one or you know, one of these countries, I should probably narrow it down to one or the other. Um, so I did happen to look in, into Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan um, through just watching some YouTube videos, and I ended up deciding to, to focus on Kazakhstan specifically. So what, what comes to mind when I think of ethnocentrism? Um, conflicts, I wrote conflicts, oppression, microaggressions, which mean like um, passive, biased, prejudiced comments. So, you know, not something explicitly racist, but more implicitly racist and, and somewhat hidden in nature is what I think of. Also, obviously, macroaggressions. Um, censorship of media. That's something that I'm very interested in just as as a person so maybe I want to look into that because I know that nations that censor their education systems and media are trying to enforce their idea of what their culture should be which is in nature ethnocentric um, I'm also interested in hate crimes and human rights and I know that you know those are also used to usually enforce what um, a culture seems to be the right way to do things and, and genocide in general, you know, um, cleaning out an entire or, you know, ethnic cleansing is the idea that getting rid of an entire race would better society as a whole. Obviously, an awful idea, um, but it is an ethnocentric topic you could explore. Okay, so I went through the stations that we've done in the past and I brainstormed some things that I might be interested in, in Googling. So at the Nearpod station, we had a lot of women's rights photos, um, civilian militias and things like that, which made me wonder, you know, what, what gender oppression, if any, might exist in Kazakhstan. Is there sexism in these? Oh my god, my dog. Hold on one second. Pause the video. They're fighting. All right, we're good. <laughs> um, so these are just some questions that I might be interested in. I'm, I'm brainstorming things that, you know, might relate to my idea. Because I already know what I'm interested in. 
maybe you're, you didn't know, which is okay. And, and maybe the Nearpod station gave you that idea. But since I did have an idea of what I want to learn about that I don't know much about, I used that to um, inspire my thinking with each station. So at the Nearpod station, I wondered, is there sexism in these countries that I'm interested in? What gender oppression, if any, might exist in the countries I'm interested in? So see, I, I'm using the word oppression up here. Oh my god, my dog. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so I'm not going to do a double take. We're just going right through with this. So the dogs, <laughs> hopefully that's the last time they interrupt me. So uh, maybe there's ethnocentric laws in place that, you know, enforce this censorship and these hate crimes. If you remember, the Holocaust was totally legal. So what, you know, sanctioned genocides or conflicts are going on that might be ethnocentric? How are they enforced by the government? And then also after that question, I was like, well, I don't even know what the government's like in these countries. Maybe I should look into that. Um, at the magazine station, I wondered how might propaganda and advertising play a role in the ethnocentrism in one of these countries I'm interested in. And that, again, follows along with censorship um, and oppression. And then at the pho uh, photography station, <laughs> I wondered if there, um, maybe there's an inspirational photograph specifically about the countries I'm interested in that has inspired change um, that I could use on my trifold. Which you don't have to do a trifold, but I'll get to that in a second. Okay. So now review. So summarize what interests you or what you want to know more about each of your topics. Well, I, I've decided that I'm interested in Kyrgyzstan or Kazakhstan. So those are my two topics. So here's what I wrote. I've learned a great deal about Russia and the Soviet Union, but not much about the countries that declared independence after the USSR's downfall. I am particularly interested in Asian culture, I should have capitalized that, which is why I chose to focus on either Kyrgyzstan or Kazakhstan as my countries of interest. With the current conflicts in the Ukraine, I am interested in exploring more of the history surrounding other countries whose national identity was, in part, born from declaring independence from the USSR. So, how do you relate this to your topic? You need to prepare what you are going to search for and to know specifically what you want to learn about before we learn about it through our projects. So that leads me into the project proposal. The purpose of the project, oh my God. The purpose of the project proposal, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> is to gather your ideas and propose to me how you're going to learn about them. So you don't need to have everything figured out. And and that's something I feel like I haven't perhaps communicated well enough. So I apologize for that. Um, but, I, but my thinking was that if I made an example, it would clarify that for us. So first, remember, we change the questions so that they fit our topic. So I'm doing the meets requirements right here. I'll, I'll make a video on the exceeds at a later time. So anyways, you have to meet to exceed. So we'll start here. So I changed it to how does ethnocentrism play a role in interactions between individuals or groups in Kazakhstan? So I've narrowed it down and I've decided, you know what, I want to look at Kazakhstan, not Kyrgyzstan. Not that I'm not interested in Kyrgyzstan. That's just, I found some really interesting things online um, that I wanted to pursue. So I'm going to for this project. Maybe next time I'll do Kyrgyzstan. <clears throat> okay, so let me see. Where did I? Keywords. So this is what I Googled. So I planned my keywords. Remember we did this on our... Um, graphic organizer before we even picked our topic. So if you need to reevaluate your keywords, this is a great way to do so. So I do not know 
much, if anything, about Kazakhstan besides the fact that it was part of the USSR. And I know things about the USSR. But I don't know anything about it since. So I'm going to Google Kazakhstan ethnocentrism modern history. That's literally where I'm starting. So I'm going to take that. Oh, I'm going to take that to Google. Enter. And now I'm going to review what Google presents to me. So Google is like a a jungle. It's wild. There's so many things going on. Um, and like we looked at in units past, you never really know if what you're seeing is accurate or not or a reliable source. So how do you know? <clears throat> Well, for one thing, you dot org is usually a good indicator. Um, and also you want to look at the title. So do, does the title match my country and anything to do with ethnocentrism? I could have also Googled oppression, conflict, and then seen if ethnocentrism was present within that. But this is just where I'm starting because I want to know if this is a topic worth pursuing. All right, so ethnic exclusion and conflict. That might be interesting. Kazakhstan as a model for regulate, regulating inter-ethnic relations. This article studies the development of inter-ethnic accord in Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan and describes the tools needed to harmonize. Interesting. Ooh, ethnocentrism and the problem of Central Asian integration. Well, this is follows my interests of um, independence and their Asian identity. So I'm going to open this up and just kind of browse. So, oh, for a second I thought it was in another language, but no, we got English over here. So let's look. Ethnocentrism and the problem of Central Asian integration, current status. Cool. So, 2012, I know that's modern. There's obviously ethnocentrism there. And, oop, I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> and it's about the Kyrgyz-Russian relationship. Checks all my boxes so far. So, let's see. The article describes the problem of regional integration in Central Asia. Integration is an especially topical issue in the context of current global trends, of uniting regions into organizations that promote cooperation in various areas of interest. The authors advance a thesis that in the case of states such as Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Taj Tajikistan, or Turkmenistan, such process will not start in the foreseeable future, if at all. Mm. Division into post-Soviet and Islamic states. Okay, interesting. This might be a good source. Let's keep looking. Indeed, the republics of once Soviet Central Asia are neighbors, <clears throat> but that doesn't account for much. For instance, Tajikistan is to a much greater extent a neighbor of Afghanistan and China rather than that of Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan. It has common borders with the former. However, Tajikistan has fewer problems with them. Let's see, Kyrgyzstan. Furthermore, the present day economies of the states in the region cannot be defined as interconnected. Hmm. Islamic and Soviet forces. So, you know what? This is probably a great source, but I'm not finding anything very quickly that's going to relate. So I'm going to move on. It's okay to do that. Ooh, history education. That's obviously something I'm interested in. I'm going to open this. History, education, and transit. Where to for Kazakhstan? So now I'm going to browse this. And you can do this often by looking at the abstract or the general about information. So let's read this together. This study examines the post-socialist transition in the secondary education. Ooh, well, I'm a secondary education teacher. This might be interesting. 
And I teach history in Kazakhstan from 1990 to the present. Ooh, perfect. Specific time period. Because I know we need that for our topic. The article examines the influence of policy talk and action upon official educational policy and how the deployment of a new narrative, national narrative, is being used to construct a de-Sovietized, re ified national identity. Educational objectives in calling for de-Russification and de-Sovietization are considered in the light of two other objectives. Hmm, this seems really interesting to me. So the author says they argue that there are two parallel projects at work that both support a more Kazakhified history curriculum and counterbalance an ethno-nationalizing program by developing the world history program. Hmm, that might be interesting. So I'm going to save this link for later and just put it in my research proposal. Um, so I'm going to add that down. That kind of fits with decision making, right? So maybe there's something about educational policy is changing due to, um, the desire to create a D, put this in quote, D. Russified national identity. Oops. All kinds of distractions today. Okay. And I'm going to put the link over here. And I like to hyperlink it, but it's okay if you can't do that on the iPads. So you can just paste it. And then I've been putting um, what it's about so I can remember for later and access it quickly. So this was the history curriculum. So I'm going to write history curriculum, oops, high school. Okay. So again, we haven't yet chosen our specific research question. We're still, in essence, browsing our interests and how we can connect ethnocentrism specifically with the regions in the world we're interested in or the topics. So I've got many ideas present so far. Um, so I did some research before starting this video. So let's go over that too. So for the first question, it says, how does ethnocentrism play a role in interactions between individuals or groups? And I changed it to say in Kazakhstan. So I happened to find that um, an article about the release of the movie Borat in uh, the U.S., which apparently outraged many Kazakhs because of its misrepresentation of their identity and culture. Um, but then I also so then I pursued this topic and found that many um, tourism companies are actually capitalizing on this. So maybe this is a specific topic that I want to pursue. So I linked um, something about Borat issues is what I called it. Um, I continued to pursue my keywords of ethnocentrism, Kazakhstan, modern world history. And then I also found a different topic maybe I want to pursue within that. So I wrote, there are current protests going on against the Kazakh government. So here's the link to that. Oh, I linked the wrong thing. Darn it. Where did it go? Here. Well, anyway, so I also found a YouTube video. You can find YouTube videos, too. Um, So this is about the unrest in Kazakhstan has been crushed by Russian troops. Maybe you're more interested, or maybe I'm more interested in that. So that's a um, potential topic too. But that's actually very different than the Borat issues. So I need to choose one or the other now. Or the education policy. Who knows? But I'm collecting ideas. So the whole point of this is to collect ideas and then to start committing to your research question. So what do I mean by a research question? 
So let's fast forward a bit. So say my research question is, here are my potential research questions, is what I should say, that I might pursue. So all I'm doing is changing these things into questions because I haven't answered them yet. So the point of the project proposal is to pick how you're going to answer the questions and show me your knowledge. Um, and then what you might pursue. So my questions um, might be, how has um, representations of Kazakh culture in the movie Borat impacted their tourism industry? And I can change that question later, but if, if I find it, you know, change the wording of that is what I mean, but that's something that you can create a whole project to answer. An open-ended question is the purpose of the research questions. So in the class after the project proposal, we'll be making our research questions. Um, say I wanted to do my other topics that I found about the um, current protests, I could ask something like this and form a project around it. How has um, un political unrest, maybe like, yeah, political unrest in Kazakhstan, or let me refer that how does modern political unrest in Kazakhstan reflect ethnocentric policies of the um, Russian government or something so in the next class you'll be coming up with your research questions I'll help you edit them I'll give you feedback on them so it doesn't have to be picture perfect the first time you ask them but we're using today or we're, rather we're using the research proposal to gear your thinking towards your research question <laughs>